Dixie is a special gift. She really, truly is. You know, uh, Wanda, stand up for me for one second, would you please? Wanda Johnson. Years ago, Wanda, Wanda has, has known uh, Dixie uh, for a long for a long time. 35 years. 35 years. <laughs> and, uh, I'm impressed with your memory. That's awesome. But uh, a few years back, Wanda saw Dixie out someplace and invited her to church one Sunday. And uh, she and Michael came. And uh, Wanda, if you had not made that invitation, we may never have had the privilege of knowing her. And so we want to say thank you inviting her. Yes, that's, a, that's an invitation for all of us. Uh, take a chance. Invite someone. They say, they say, I'm not looking for a church. Just tell them that's okay. We're looking for you. And, uh, and, and bring them on anyway. Stand with me, would you please, this morning. And I'm going to share a word with you today. Uh, I'm just calling it present. I hope this, you know, sometimes these, these colors, color schemes on these the slide sets we use, sometimes it works good and sometimes I, I, I wonder. But anyway, we'll, we'll go ahead and put that next slide up there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Read, read that with me, please. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, he was found the child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. I want to share today for a few minutes on the subject, on the, on the topic, God with us. Put your hand right there. Lord, thank you that before we ever knew there was a vacancy, you had already planned to move in. Make our hearts your home. Thank you that no matter what we do, no matter where we go or how long we live on this earth, what situation or problem or circumstance we might come across, you are always and forever with us. The miracle of Christmas is you came not just to die for our sins and to deliver us from sin, but you came to abide with us, to live in us, and to make our hearts your home. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful holiday, this holiday season, this Christmas season, that reminds us of the miracle of majesty. Holy Spirit, you're the author. You're the teacher. You're the speaker. Anoint my words. Hide me behind the cross, Lord, and let your word penetrate our hearts and give us hope and courage. This day we pray in Jesus' name. And our God's children said, Amen. You may be seen. There are 8,810 promises in the Bible. And I want, if you have your Bible with you in digital format or paper like I do, turn in your Bible to Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15. This is the first prophecy and the first promise in the Bible. Verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The first promise in the Bible was for a redeemer after the fall of mankind. I'm so thankful that despite the times and ways that I, I mean, I'm pretty creative when it comes to messing up. Okay, well, me and, me and Mike Franklin are pretty creative when it comes to messing up. But no matter how we mess up and how we, how we blow it, God has a plan in place to redeem our messes. Can you say amen? These promises, uh, years ago, a, a, a Bible teacher, uh, Everett Storms, in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, uh, put together this list, and, and he spent a year and a half to catalog these, uh, these promises. And I want you to notice that 85% of promises in Scripture are, are by God to man. The, 
Bible is more than just a book of history. It's actually God's promise book to you and to me. And so all those promises, uh, they're all precious. Can you say amen? amen. I said they're all precious. Amen. But the most precious promise is of a redeemer that would come for us and come to us. What's the best Christmas gift you ever received? Getting saved. Getting saved? That's a good Christmas gift. In fact, that's the best Christmas gift. Anybody ever, ever get a car for Christmas? <laughs> Chloe's praying for a car for Christmas, aren't you, Chloe? <laughs> Not this Christmas, but next week. When you think about Christmas gifts, sometimes it's really, especially in the maddening uh, season that we're in right now, where everything just kind of by the next class. If you notice, in fact, I was talking to, to uh, I go to Walmart pretty frequently because it's a saving place, and I believe in saving. And so uh, I was there, I, and I love to talk to people, so it's a great place to talk to people, by the way. And uh, I was talking, I was interviewing, uh, she didn't know I was doing it, but I was interviewing the lady at the returns area. Actually, I was getting a gift card, but there was nobody over there, so I had to go find somebody. And I was asking her about Christmas. I said, do you like this time of year? She said, for 16 years, I hate it. And I was recalculating at that point, what should I say next? I wasn't really sure. And I said, really? Well, why do you hate it? She said, because every Christmas Eve, we're supposed to get out of here, out of here at 6 o'clock. And she says, and I work every Christmas Eve, and I worked every Christmas Eve for 16 years. And she said, and the, we have to call the cops to come out here. This is in Boaz. We have to call the cops to come out here and prevent people from coming in. She said, they've got 364 days to come and shop for Christmas. No, they wait to the last 30 minutes before time to close. And I said, can you tell me how you really feel? Some, for some people, it's just a bad time. I want to remind you of this. As Dr. Billy Graham once said, the very purpose of Christ coming into the world was that he might offer up his life as a sacrifice for the sins of men. He came to die. This is the heart of Christmas. That's the heart of Christmas. They're never going to get confused and, and, and bamboozled by, by something, by, by flashing lights and by sale signs and by Black Fridays and Dark Thursdays or whatever else is going on in your world. No, that's the purpose of Christmas. That's the heart of Christmas. Yes. Jesus came to die. He came to die for Valentine. He came to die for Kevin. He came to die for Miss Daly. He came to die for us. Why? Because he doesn't want to live eternally without us. The best news of Christmas is that Jesus said, you, you're, you're lost and you're not, never going to make it home. Except I come to intervene. Let me talk to you about Jesus for a few minutes. Then I'm going to land on the, on, the, uh, on the God with us part. This is what the scriptures say. By the way, this slide is on our Facebook page. You feel free to go back home this evening and look up the verses. Jesus is these, among other things. By the way, there's 240 different titles of Jesus. He's our advocate with the Father. He's the bridegroom. He's the brightness of the Father's glory. He's the bread of life. He's Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. He's our counselor. Can somebody shout amen? He's the door of the sheepfold. He's eternal life. He's the everlasting father. Hallelujah. He's the finisher of our faith. He's the first and the last. Jesus is the friend of sinners. He's God manifest in the flesh. Man, if I was on the street corner right now, I'd be going crazy. He's the heir of all things. He's our great high priest. He is the I am. He's Jesus Christ, our Savior. Aren't you thankful for Jesus? He's the judge of the living and the dead. He is king of kings. He's king of glory. He's king over the earth. He's the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the light of the world, the light of life and the everlasting light. Let me ask you one more time. What's the best Christmas gift you've ever received? Do you remember your first Christmas? Jordan doesn't remember his first Christmas. No one does. Oh, some of us do. I was 20 when I had my first Christmas. I remember it very well. Do you remember your first Christmas? Do you remember the wonder when, when you, you saw all those boxes and bags and, and wrappings that had two Glenn from Santa? Well, I think you should have waited until you were 20 to have one then because you don't seem to be excited about it. And let me tell you something, when you, when you go to a stranger's home, by the way, that's my mother-in-law. Anyway, if you go to a stranger's home, and, uh, and anyway, and, and you, there's that big tree, and there's, there's, you, you, have to, you have to walk like it's, it's like landmines. You, you know, because if you step on something, there's not much room there. And so you walk, and I'm, I'm a fairly big guy, so it's hard to get through all the stuff. And so you walk this really narrow road through all the gifts because they're everywhere. 
Now there's kids everywhere, and there's there's ham in the in the in the oven or on the table. Glory to and there's devil eggs right beside it. Praise God. Out of and cherry pie on the end for a glory to God. And so and, and you and you walk and you see all these kids, their their eyes are just sparkling with 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 excitement and with wonder. Why? Everybody loves a present. Can you say amen? Everybody loves a present. Let me talk to you about God with us. Then I'm going home. Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Yes. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. It's amazing to me that God can be fully in Jordan Blaylock. I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that, I'm just saying that God can be fully in Jordan Blaylock. Amen. And, uh, and, and, and yet, he's, he's all over you. He's all in you. And yet, there's enough of him to bleed over into your precious bride and be all in her. And to be all in me. To be in all of us at the same time in fullness. How many understand that's a miracle? That all of Jesus is in all of us all the time. So no matter what I need, no matter what situation I may find, I may find myself in, Jesus is with me. Jesus is with me. The thought of a present God was mind-blowing for the Jewish people. You remember when Moses went up to the top of the mountain to receive the tablets of the law? The Bible says that as Moses went up, there was lightning and smoke. And Moses walked into the cloud. A black cloud. The people below were watching this saying, what kind of a God is this? So they, they offered sacrifices because they were, they were ordered to, they were commanded to, that was the law. But they did not know God like you and I are able to know him. But through Jesus, we have an approachable God. I like that. We have an approachable God. We don't have to run from, listen, Jesus left that cloud and came to us. So we would never have to go there again. We have an approachable God. I love that. I love the fact that in my worst moments, that Emmanuel, God with us, is aware. He's present. And he personally cares for us. Aren't you thankful for that, God? Amen. Why should Emmanuel matter to us? Why should this divine name be important to us today? One of the greatest authors of my generation, Ken Hughes, he's still around. He wrote this years ago. Consider the implication of Christ's astounding capacity for sympathy and understanding. I want you to think about that with me just for a second. Christ's astounding capacity for sympathy and understanding. His in instrument, so to speak, was the same as ours. It is a fact that if you have two in tune pianos in the same room and a note is struck on one, the same note will gently respond on the other, though not touched by another person's hand. This is called sympathetic resonance. Christ's instrument, his humanity, was like ours in every way, except that he had no sin. And when a chord is struck in the weakness of our human instrument, it resonates in his. I love this thought. There is no note of human experience that does not play in Christ's as well. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. He has an equal capacity for sympathy. He goes far beyond intellectual and understanding. Jesus does not just imagine how his children feel. He feels it. You know why I love Jesus? Because when I thought my life was over, when I thought I was dying, and I felt, my wife remembers this very well. I, I don't think I've ever talked about this publicly. I, I think it was 96. I had some weirdo bacteria, something happened to me right at the first of the year. And for three days, well, it was longer than that, for three days, you remember that, honey? I couldn't move. I'd lost a lot of weight. And I, was, I, was, I, was, I was very sick. I lost 16 pounds in three days. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. And I remember laying there thinking, I'm going to die. 
I was 30, 38 years old. I remember thinking, and I, I, I was saved and ready to go meet Jesus. I really was. I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to go this way. And people were calling to check on me. I couldn't even, I couldn't lift my finger. I couldn't do anything. And as I lay there, I remember I was, all I could do was sleep, sleep and cry, cry and sleep. And I had a box of Kleenexes, and I ran out of Kleenexes, and I put my hand up here to catch my tears because I was hurting so bad. They ran off, the tears ran off my hand into the pillow. And I woke up in a moment. It just it seemed like a moment, and my pillow was dry. My face was dry. The pain that I felt in the pits of my insides, my, my, my stomach, my, everything, everything in me hurt, all of it. And all of a sudden, I remember taking a breath. And I heard this voice, Brother Ron, come on. Jesus said, you will live and not die. I've got work for you to do. Amen. You ready to get up? In that moment, I, 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 I knew something. I knew that Jesus not, was not just with me. Jesus felt what I was feeling. He recognized that, 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 horrible, uh, that horrible emptiness I was feeling inside. That, that I, I could not do anything about it. You know something, when you have nothing to do, when all you can do is have faith, Come on. that's enough to get you through. Amen. Can you say amen? Jesus feels with you. I love Jesus, don't you? Amen. This author that I'm going to share with in a moment, he's, he's a, this, this book is from several years ago, 1975. Do you remember the story of the Andes survivors. You remember in the 1970s when a plane crash happened in Argentina and, and several of, the, of, the, of the, the, the team members died there and they were stranded on the mountains there. Many of them, there was, it, was, it was written later that some of them had to resort to cannibalism to survive. I don't know all about all that stuff. I just know this. I love, I love what, what uh, Pierce Paul Reed wrote. He said, when they prayed together at night, they felt an almost mythical solidarity Watch this. Not only among themselves, but with God. They had called to him in their need. And now they felt him close at hand. What's so special about Jesus? What's the big deal about Emmanuel? It's that when you have nothing left in your bank. When you're broke. When you're sick. When, you, when you're spent completely in every way, shape, or form, even then, he is with you. And my last author I'm quoting is C.S. Lewis, my all-time favorite, next day, W.T. And he, he said this in letters to Malcolm. He said, we may, we may ignore, but we can nowhere evade the presence of God. The world is crowded with him. He walks everywhere incognito, and the incognito is not always hard to penetrate. The real labor is to remember, to attend, in fact, to come awake, still more to remain awake. I want to share with you something that's a conviction of mine. I've been in church since 1984, Christmas of 84, my first service, 35 years ago. And I've noticed something in the body of Christ. See, you can get to a point where you're so familiar with God that you lose the wonder and awe of God. You, become, you can become so familiar with churchianity and where you sit on Sunday and who's going to be beside you and what you, where you're going to go eat afterwards, you know, because we, we, we only got four choices, right? And so, it, but you, you get so used to that that, that the wonder and awe of God escapes you. And that's why when some people that have never known Jesus, when they get saved, they come into a church and they say, what are you people doing sleepwalking here? They don't say that, they just think you know what most people who, who just get saved when they go to a church like this, you know what they, what they want to say to us? If they could come up and grab the microphone and start talking, they'd say, guys, wake up! What, you've got the greatest gift in the entire world! And you're sleeping on it. Amen. He's God with us. He's in me. He lives in me really down deep in my heart. He lives in me. And he lives in you equally. Amen. Greatest gift. You can give Jesus this year is not a present, but your presence. Amen. I'm waiting for the Sunday when 100% of the people walk in the doors and 100% of the people on the, 
who, who are on the platform that we meet in the middle of some place and we're all full of God. I mean, we're running over. We're so full of Jesus. It, it's, it's filling over. You know what's going to happen that day? There's going to be spontaneous combustion. I know that. It's coming. There's going to be spontaneous combustion. Something's going to go off like a neutron bomb in our spirit. You know why? Because God wants to be worshipped in, with passion. He wants to be experienced in joy. He wants to be felt. Amen. If Jesus feels my hurts, Come on. if Jesus feels my weakness, if Jesus feels my pain, then I want him to feel my praise. I want, I want him to resonate. That, listen, when I gather for Christmas, it's not, I could care less how many boxes are under the tree, actually. I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm busting up to good threats today. Amen. I'm, I'm all right. What matters to me is not presence. What matters to me is that Jesus makes his home in me. And I have wrapped my mind around a lot of things over the years that I could not academically or intellectually conceive of or, or, or comprehend. But the one thing that still astounds me, and I hope and pray to God, I, in fact, I prayed this way for. From the moment I got to say, Lord, if I ever lose it, take me. I don't want to be here. I don't want to treat you as some option. No, I come to church not because I get paid to. I come to church because I've got to. Amen. I can't keep this inside by myself. Amen. Jesus lives in me. I'm going to shout from the rooftop, Jesus lives in me. I've been in islands in the Philippines preaching the gospel and telling people who will never see again, Jesus wants to live in you in Kwame and Philippines. Really? Yes. He wants to live in people in Walmart. Praise God. You know they need to. Amen. <laughs> he wants to live in, in the cashier that checks you out at the restaurant this morning. Jesus is real. He's inside me. Stand with me all over this building, please. Jesus is real. He's real. Amen. I said he's real. Amen. He's real. Amen. He's re and to think that Jesus once was the size of this precious size. Look at that. God reduced to the size of a cell that would sit with a few hundred others on the head of a pen and then be born and birthed. And to come into this world like that. Could you imagine it? Why did he do it? He did it for one reason. He loved you. He loved you. Before you ever loved him, he loved you. If you never love him, he loves you. Jesus is Emmanuel. God with us. Bow your heads with me just for a moment, please. Father, today, our hearts, I pray that our hearts are full. Are full of wonder and gratitude. Jesus. He's not some distant deity. We don't have to make a trek to the Middle East and to go down into some cave someplace and be led by hand or by flashlight by somebody who says they know where he is. No. Jesus is our Emmanuel. He's with us. He's with me. The darkest, hardest, coldest, loneliest moment of my life, Jesus is with me. Father, today in this room, I don't know every soul, but you do. God, my prayer today is that there's one single solitary soul in this place who does not know you personally and intimately as Lord and Savior, that you reveal to them the same as you have done to me and so many others here, that you came personally for them, that you would have, let, you would have left your throne in glory, laid aside all your prerogatives of, as deity, if only one believed. God, my prayer today is that not one single soul in this worship service would leave this place without knowing you as Lord and Savior. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, 
I'm going to lead you to prayer this morning. I'm going to ask everybody to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. Come into, come into my heart. Make your home in me. I'll not resist you. I'm ready to receive you. And I will host your presence in my heart every day for the rest of my life. In sickness, in sadness, in sorrow, and success, I receive your life. I receive your love. Now, lift that hand with me, all, all of you, all of this place to heaven. Jesus, we mean it. We mean it, so help us, God. We mean it. God, let us not go through the motions another single solitary day. Life is too short. Life is too precious to treat you as ordinary. There's nothing ordinary about you, Jesus. There's nothing ordinary about your story. There's nothing ordinary about your sacrifice. There's nothing ordinary about your ascension. And there surely is nothing ordinary about your return. Soon and very soon, we will see you face to face. With my own eyes and not another's, I will behold you. Lord, this, this Christmas in Marshall County, Alabama, this Christmas in our families, this Christmas in our homes, our businesses, Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you. We want you to be the main thing always, not just at Christmas, but every day, of every year of our life on this earth. Thank you, Jesus. I know you held hands once before, but reach over and take the hand beside you. I want you to, there's a that human component to everything to me. Hold on, Stacey, I'm going to get in here between you and Billy. I don't want to start my fight. Here we go. I love you, brother. Oh, Jesus. Come on, bless him for a moment. Thank you. Thank the Lord that right now as we're here, God, the person to your left and to your right is just as precious, just as valuable. Oh, God. Thank you that you live in us. Thank you, Lord, that you're pleased to abide in us. God, we pray, Lord, this Christmas that the family of faith in Marshall County will experience you in, in, in unprecedented joy. God, our faces will advertise the reality Jesus lives in us. The greatest gift that was ever given is alive and well in our hearts. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Lord, as we, as we leave this place this morning and as we gather with our families on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, God, we're missionaries. Some of them may not know what we know or who we know. Some of them may not know the hope we hold in our hearts. God, we don't have to preach a three-point sermon and give an altar call. God, just let us link Jesus all over the place. Let his love flow through us and affect and impact those we love and we, that we're concerned about. Jesus, be Jesus in me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to capitalize on this opportunity draw hearts to you this Christmas. Our Christmas gift, if we could order it, would be for our families, all of them, yeah. every single solitary member of our families to know you personally, to know you as Savior and Lord, yes. and to call upon you. Jesus, we love you. Now let that hand go and stretch it up one more time. Jesus, I adore you, I exalt you, I praise you, I honor you, Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our community. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the United States of America. God, I thank you that there's over 70 communities, large communities right now, that are experiencing revival. It's not advertised because it doesn't make the headlines in, 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 in newspapers. But God, you're doing something significant in, in, in our nation. God, there's a revival happening in our nation. We thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Lord, the missionaries today all over the world will lead over 120,000 people to Christ.
this day. God, the family of God is growing moment by moment. And it's all because of Jesus. It's because of the sacrifice that he was willing to give. So that every person who calls upon him will experience Emmanuel. God be with us this holiday season. Protect us in our travels. Keep us safe. And God, for all that you accomplished through us, we give you and you alone the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. And all God's children said amen. 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 One more hand clap of praise. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated if you As you're, before you exit this morning, we're going to serve communion. So I get our pastors and board members to come and join me. We're going to circulate with the congregation and pass these elements out. And uh, I want to say this before before anybody is served. If you're, even if you're not a member of this church, if you are saved and you know Jesus as Lord, you are a brother or our sister, and you are welcome to uh, celebrate communion with us. receive those elements, please just hold them in your hands reverently, and we will observe the Lord's Supper in just a few moments.